Hey everyone, it's Alex Morke with Real Estate Shorts. In this episode, we're going to talk about the difference and similarity between discount rate and internal rate of return. Let's get started. So first, because I think it's a little easier to start with, let's talk about how they're similar. And I think it's easiest to kind of define discount rate relative to IRR as being on either side of the exact same coin. Both of them are a reflection of risk and return. Both of them are used to help investors make investment decisions. But I think beyond these points, that's really where they start to, to fork in the road, where they start to split and get applied in different ways. So even though they're very related, I think their application is where most people get tripped up a little bit. So I would think of discount rate and IRR as being two sides of the exact same coin. Investors will use discount rate and IRR to make investment decisions. Both of them are a reference to that relationship between risk and return. But their similarities kind of stop there. It's from here that we should begin to explore their differences because I think it's through the differences that we can start to learn their applications and really how valuable they are when used together instead of one or the other. So let's kick off with how they're different, starting with internal rate of return. So I think the easiest way to kind of define these differences is internal rate of return is based on the investment and discount rate is based on the investor. So let me define that further. Internal rate of return is the return that's calculated. It is the return that's estimated or implied or assumed to happen within some future stream of cash flows from an investment. So let's say there's an office building you'd like to purchase. You project the cash flows for the next handful of years on that purchased investment. And then you can estimate what the return is on that stream of cash flows. The internal rate of return is specific to that investment. So what is that rate of return of your purchase of that property to earn that future stream of cash flows? Discount rate, on the other hand, is a bit more reflective. It is based on you as the investor, what it is that you want, what it is that you need to earn, or what it is that you think your compensation should be based on the risk present in an investment opportunity. So I think another way to describe this is discount rate is almost like the line in the sand that you draw. That is that hurdle, that bar, that benchmark. And then you're going to be using internal rate of return from all the opportunities in the marketplace and compare it to that benchmark. So internal rate of return is almost external. It's driven by each individual investment opportunity. And your discount rate is established by you as the investor. And you're going to be using one to compare against the other. So as you've probably come to hear, learn, or read, whenever that internal rate of return is greater than your discount rate, you're expected to perform better than what you require and so you should consider that investment opportunity. The opposite is true. If IRR is less than, then maybe you should not consider that investment opportunity. So I think it'd be important to illustrate a quick example just to help prove that point. So here we have this estimated stream of cash flows for the next five years. So you're gonna purchase the property for a million dollars, operate it for a certain number of years, and then you're gonna sell it for one and a half million dollars five years from now. So this row that I just highlighted simply summarizes that cash flow pattern. Now, the internal rate of return in this case is a little more than 14 and a half, almost 14.8%. So this is the rate of return specific to this investment opportunity. Discount rate in this case, it's a given assumption. There's no formula here. I am defining what I need to earn. So I will compare internal rate of return to discount rate and make a choice. I will say I need to earn 10. This opportunity could earn almost 15. Is that good or is that bad? And so most investors would come out and say, 
it's worth considering because the internal rate of return is greater than what it is that I require. It's greater than my discount rate. And so I think the opposite is also true. If I came back and said, I believe my discount rate to be 20%, then this investment opportunity won't compensate me sufficiently. It won't return enough to meet my hurdle or expectation. So maybe I should pass or ignore or further evaluate this opportunity to make sure my assumptions are correct. So again, I think the main point here is internal rate of return is specific to an investment opportunity and discount rate is specific to the investor. And you're going to be using one to compare against the other. And so I think the best way to kind of illustrate the importance of this relationship is by talking about what happens when the two are the same. So when internal rate of return is exactly equal to the discount rate, what does that mean? Should you consider it or not? So let's kind of talk about what this means. So I think one of the best ways to illustrate this relationship between the two, this comparative nature and application between IRR and discount rate, is to show what happens when they are equal to help you make that choice. So in this example, we have a discount rate that is exactly equal to your internal rate of return. So again, just to kind of go through the process, we have this summary of all the cash flows that you expect between now and the end of the fifth year of this investment. The internal rate of return in this case is exactly 10%. Your discount rate is exactly 10%. And so this begs the question, should you consider this investment or not? And this is where, at least in my experience, the world in real estate is kind of segmented into two polar opposite parties. So one says, in the traditional academic sense, yes, we should continue to explore that investment opportunity because the return that I need is exactly equal to the return that I may earn. Other investors come back and say, it's too close for comfort. You never exactly know what's going to happen over the next five years. And because of that risk, I don't want to buy into an opportunity that gives me exactly what I was looking for because it won't happen exactly the way that I'm anticipating. The argument either for or against either party is they're both right that you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and your projections for the future are almost entirely going to be wrong. It won't go as planned. Things rarely do. So should you give yourself a bit of a cushion? Should you hedge a little bit? Should you make sure that your internal rate of return is slightly better than your discount rate to be able to account for that uncertainty? Some would argue yes. On the other hand, some would argue that that uncertainty should be reflected within your discount rate. If you are unsure of what the future should be, increase your discount rate enough to compensate you for that uncertainty. I don't think either party is right or wrong. This really boils down to your preference as an investor to begin to make these investment decisions based on your calculations and estimate of the future. So the point to keep in mind here is, as you may have picked up from the prior example, when the purchase price is lower, so in this case, we're resetting it to a million bucks. When the purchase price is lower, the internal rate of return will change. Or alternatively, if we change the sales price to $2 million from one and a half, the internal rate of return will change. But if you notice, the discount rate never changed. Again, internal rate of return is specific to the investment opportunity. The discount rate is specific to the investor. The discount rate remains static. You establish what it should be, and then you try to benchmark all the other opportunities against it. So as your assumptions change, as your negotiations change, as your outlook for the future changes, internal rate of return will be the first to react because all the cash flows will adjust and internal rate of return will either go up or down. And your discount rate, we could argue later about whether it should change again, 
However, your discount rate will be that point of reference against all those future internal rate of return calculations. So just to recap, the discount rate and IRR are kind of debate or questions about how they're similar and how they're different has been going on for a very long time. And I think, again, the easiest way for you to think about them is that they are both sides of this exact same coin. One, IRR, is representative of the outside world, of the investment opportunity, and discount rate is representative of you as an investor and your required rate of return. Hey everyone. <clears throat> hey everyone, it's Alex Morkate with Real Estate Shorts. In this episode, we're going to talk about the differences And, and it's, I mean, just talk. There's a fire truck right in front of the house. <laughs> Where was I? So if you found this video helpful, there are a handful of others that I'd recommend you check out. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, I look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again.